<laughs> mm, it's thinking about it. Mm. Are we going to go on? <laughs> Was that the longest time ever? And I didn't even have to press a button and Jordy. <laughs> oh, holding my breath. <laughs> oh, mate. It's time to reconnect. It's time to bridge the gap. Time is now. It's all done with a smile. How are you, mate? Fantastic. Welcome, welcome everyone to What's Up Wednesdays. This is an opportunity where we share our story of what's been happening in the week and oh my gosh, what a week it has been from the Business of Smiles. Uh, Scott and Shorty here to uh, spread some smiles, spread some stories and uh, give an update of what's been happening in the world over this week. Wow. Wow. So firstly, I just want to say sincere apologies uh, for missing last week, but there is always a good story behind it, which I'm sure we're going to get into it a little bit later this evening. So uh, how are you, mate? How's your week been? Mate, my week's been fantastic. It's also had concern in it. It's also had International Women's Day. It's It's... I was just so proud of the women in our in our lives, and uh, if you're a woman in my life, and I'm sure that I've reached out to some key people in my life that are just letting me know how grateful I am for them. I actually went out with the cold water crazies yesterday, and I, actually, I'm just I'm really going to jump onto that really quickly because yes. this is something really important for me. Uh, they're an amazing bunch of uh, women that get out there in the water and support one another, and they are just I really want to honour them for stepping into life. Uh, Heather Joy Bassett actually went out with the girls uh, yesterday, which was just amazing to see. Peter Murphy, the local federal MP, also got out there with them, and I'm just so proud of them for stepping into it. But there was something that I really want to share that I I want to bring in to conversation a little bit more often, and it's about when to step into something and when to just stand back and support and just be present. So yesterday morning, uh, I shot down to see the girls and my only role there was to honor them. On International Women's Day, it was not to be a part of their circle, it was not, to, it was just to honor them and let them know how much I appreciate them, love them and respect what they're doing and then let them be them. Because too often we can get involved in things that we actually probably don't need to be belong with. Sometimes we need to sit back and understand and just appreciate what is. So for me yesterday, that was exactly what it was on International Women's Day. Respect and honour the women in my life. So I'm just, I'm really grateful for that. So I just, sorry, a little bit of a tangent straight away, but it's it's a pretty serious thing. No, right? I, I think, yeah, yeah, cheers. But I think it's something that we, we can all do a little bit more of, you know, like instead of always jumping in and, you know, getting rah-rah, sometimes stand back and just support and listen and love. So, yeah. yeah. So, but tonight, sorry, it, I'm, sorry, go, come. I, I was just going to say, that's a, that's a great analogy because it's, it's an analogy around whenever you fly of the ability to put on your own uh, face mask first in, in uh, an emergency. Put your own oxygen on first so therefore you can actually then sit, reassess, if you need to help, help. If you need not to be just where you were at, that's totally fine as well. So I think, you know, taking what you've just mentioned is is sometimes getting in and do doing is not necessarily the the best path forward. It's a great path forward sometimes, but sometimes just being back and holding space and listening, oh, it's just it's absolutely huge. It's so powerful. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, that's what we do in the business of smiles, right? We walk around, we just appreciate people for who they are and where they're at, and then just listen, watch, and take on, you know? Yep. <laughs> hey, thanks, Hugh, for that. Thanks for noticing that I uh, no longer <laughs> have a beard. I had to go nude for <laughs> a little bit. I uh, just to get a bit itchy. But anyway, <laughs> thanks, Hugh. So it's just um, um, promotion tonight was not about me and it's about you and... I actually want to attack that pretty early, Shorty. Like, there's always amazing things that happen in our life, and you know, maybe I'll tell a few stories later. But tonight is very much about you because I've got some questions for you, mate. Firstly, I want to tell you I love you. 
I thank you. I, I thank you for sharing this journey journey of life with me and with our community. Yep. But I want to know how you are. I love I love you just pull out the six shooter straight off the bat. Um, how am I? I'm tired. I'm emotional. I have good moments where I just get in and <laughs> what we just talked about do. Uh, there are moments I sit back and go, what the just happened? There are times where I just go, wow, look what I've got on the plate. There are times where I'm like, cool, you've got this. Let's go, Shorty. Come on, make it happen. There's times where, you know what, I just need to turn everything off and just be with the kids and be with Matt. So I feel like this last 10 days, it's been those who have visited Luna Park in Sydney, the Mighty Mouse, where you're in the roller coaster and you're going one way and the and the carriage turns one way and, and your body goes one way, but you feel like you're still going the other way. Next minute you get whiplashed around. So it's been a journey, right? And and I'm sure when this dies down over this next week, for me personally, the recovery of what's happening up in up in the Northern Rivers where I am <clears throat> will be going on for years um, because it is the worst flood that's ever happened up there, uh, particularly in Lismore. Um, which, which, thank, thankfully, um, so appreciative. We're not, we don't live in Lismore. We live in Lennox Head, uh, about forty-five minutes from Lismore. But the kids' school is in the heart of Lismore, um, and you would have seen in my, my personal Facebook um, photos, where it was is up on the second floor of their two-story building. Completely, they've got two buildings completely under, and. Um, Going through that, going through that was just, it's just like a war zone. It was just, I felt like I was overseas in a war zone where there was just stuff out on the road. It was walls were falling over. There was mud everywhere. The smell was just putrid. It was just like, wow, this is ground. Like I felt like it was a ground zero. It was just, wow, where do we start? And so... Hey, it's been a very emotional last 10 days. How are you feeling today? Um, today, <clears throat> today, once again, ups and downs and lefts and rights. Um, today, really good, beautiful parts. Um, you know, hanging out with the kids because obviously the kids are off this week. We're down in Sydney just... Um, finishing off the, the granny flat down here and, and getting things in order. So um, hanging out with, with some of the family, which is lovely. And and so that was nice. But once again, it's like, oh, cool, right. Get it and, and, and get stuff done while working, while, you know, catching up with clients. So um, how I'm feeling, same again, some highs and lows, some ups and downs. But what is beautiful and so appreciative is having you in my life where you've Call me numerous times a day, go, we do we do and have the ability just to have someone like you just to keep on checking. So I'm super appreciative. Thank you, mate. No, it is. Well, it's important, right? Because we're in this journey together. You know, mm. and I just, we see enough of the bad stuff on the news. I want to see through your eyes. What are the things you're seeing in your community do? Mm. Really good point and really great question. <clears throat> so I see it as a couple of different layers. I see it as you have the Lismore com community, which is so thick. And then you have the next community, which is still really tight. And they're just like, right, get into full on action mode. And then you have the peripheral community going, I want to help. How can I help? What can I do to help? But there's no do this, do that. They're just like, I'm here, I'm here. I don't know what to help, but I'll, you know, I'll help, but I'm still doing doing my, my jam, which is totally fine. So I want to break it down into those three, three sectors. The Lismore community, my gosh, like going through and helping with the cleanup and then looking at, looking at the, how they interact with one another 
it was just, right, I'm here, how can I help? I want to share a little story around that. So um, myself and um, this, the two other friends who we were, when we were cleaning up the school, we came out to the car and just to grab some lunch. And there were these three beautiful women, 60s, 70s, had two trestle tables set up on the sidewalk in the middle of the wall zone, all the furnitures and all that. And they had um, sausages, they had rolls, they had chicken salad, they had salad, they had Tim Tams, they had tea, coffee, juices, and they were just people walking past. What do you love? Want love? Want a coffee, love? Want a cup of tea, love? And they're just like just there and just being supported. And we we're chatting to one of them and said, yeah, you know, I, my store was a couple of stores up. I've got a clothing store and you know what? I'm not coming back. Like I got hit in 2017. I thought that was it. And then he'd get a hit again. I'm not coming back. I'm done. But I'm here to help one another and help the, the community. You have then, you know, guys rocking up in their four wheel drives, throwing the tarp out the side and they're camping there, just helping one another, just on the tools all day. And so it's just amazing what I realized that even though there was not, you know, looking back, there wasn't the project planning, which like, this is what we need. We need someone to go, right, you got morning shift, you got afternoon shift, you got this level, you got this level, you got this task and this task. Everyone just got in and knew what had to be done at a subconscious level. And it was just like, we just go to you till there's no sunshine. And it was just like the intensity of that was just phenomenal. And it was just relentless. And, and you could see the tiredness in people. You could see how much energy and how much uh, they gave into what they were doing. But they're just, they're just coming back for more, just coming back for more. And to see that community, that initial community was amazing. And then you have the, the next level community, which is those organizing, uh, you know, organizing the evacuation centers, those organizing those donations, those organizing, you know, they may not be there physically, but they're there on the keyboard updating everyone. And that in itself is so valuable. You know, like, you know, so-and-so needs a helicopter ride because they're, their family is isolated, they've got no food or water, or, or there's a pregnant lady that needs to be evac'd, or you know, there's, you know, there's these an animals that are stranded, or whatever it is, like, guys, we, they need petrol. Guys, we've run out of food. Like, and so they're orchestrating behind, not on the front line, but actually behind the scenes, and their work was just absolutely priceless because they were the mecca of information all through their computers, which was absolutely beautiful. And then the third third part of that is is those who are removed from the actual seeing it and and they can only see it on the news or hear it and so forth. And once again, it's just like, how can I help? How can I help? What can I do? It's like, yeah, cool. Here's a here's a GoFundMe or or here's a petition to sign or donate a bunch of two minute noodles, whatever it is. Like I've come down to Sydney. And, you know, obviously to do some, I have to do some work on the granny flat, but also to bring up flood supplies as I leave on Friday. And I put it out to my mates. <laughs> Mate rings me and goes, Shorty, <laughs> I've ordered 10 cartons of two minute noodles for you, expect it at your doorstop tomorrow. <laughs> well, like, just that kind of stuff. It's just like, oh, I do, thank you. Like, you know, and so dropping off all this stuff where it's just like, this is the the beautiful thing about community where it's put under these unfortunate um, disasters, how they actually come together. And, you know, they, okay, you, you, you know, then the conversations around where's the government, where's the ADF, where's the SES? They're there, right? They're there. And, you know, I was telling you before, like at, my, at Lily's Bicycle, there's 300 defense, uh, Army Defence Force camping outside in near where, uh, in Byron, in the basketball centre there. So they're there, but could have they been earlier? But they're there now, right? But the ability where you see out of that structure, out of the government, out of SES and out of the Army, so to speak, what can actually the community do? And this is where human behavior, when we come back to that rawness and that, that inner, inner dial, we know what we need to do. And is that, it is literally our mission. 
It's time to reconnect. It's time to bridge the gap. That time is now and it all starts with a smile. <laughs> and to see the smiles on people's faces when you turn up, when you see how you go, when you're rocking the streets, I'm on the back of this van, <laughs> right? In this get up and they're and like back of the van, open van going, yeah, and they're just smiling, right? That's what we do. That's what it's all about. So there's the community. There's the community right now. Thank you for sharing, man. Because I think life through your eyes is important. Yeah, I think it's really important to actually see that because you, I think you're a wise man that sees, sees things. How's a family? Thank you. Yeah, family is good. Family is good. Um, you know, obviously the kids not having um, their school to go back to. But once again, in times of crisis, you really see who are the captains that stand up. And the kids principal, John Stewart from the living school, Whoa. what a man. So the ability, we were talking about relationships, right? So talking to him when we we're cleaning out the schools that we needed a generator. And he goes, oh, he goes, I already had four generators. But I gave one to the was it one to the uni, one to the hospital, one to this place, and one to this place because they needed it more than us, <laughs> right? Goes, That's all right. We'll work it out. We'll work through it. And through his leadership, and through his calmness, and through his direction, like it just things fall into place. And he's got a farm where around the corner from where we are, um, and where he goes, cool. The kids can't go to school. We'll make shift. We'll do. And so they're actually having, uh, coming to the farm and also at the local rugby hall to to learn from 10 to 2 each day. And yeah, it's not as structured as it usually is, a, you know, a 9 to 3 kind of day at school. But once again, it's coming back together, for allowing the kids to connect, allowing the kids to communicate, allowing the kids to actually just open up and, and talk about how they're feeling and what's going on for them. And He's then, he shared something today that um, a joint partnership that he was working on before the floods with the um, Southern Cross University up in Lismore, where now they've secured the same, what they're working on before the floods, the same sector of the university. So when they go back in, uh, two weeks time, that they've actually got a part of the university that the senior kids can actually go back to full full time learning. So like, his vision they're building more facilities at his own farm like where the kids go and learn on the farm every single week um and this is the vision that this guy has and it's just so inspiring and that's the that's the people that i love being around because it's like wow he's playing a big game he's changing the lives of 200 kids and their families and their families and so forth and so forth it's absolutely beautiful so thanks john mm -hmm. I love that true leader standing up in a time of, of when leadership is really needed. Okay? And leadership is something that I feel could be done a lot better in Australia. I think it could be done a lot better around the world. I think. Totally. Yep. <clears throat> it's just wonderful to hear. Like John has started the living school and it's not an alternative school. It's, it's, a, it's a different education system which I was actually going to ask you to share, actually. I'm going to let you explain it. You understand it much better. Yeah, so the Living School, this is their third year, so it's based in Lismore. Um, uh, John grew up in Lennox Head, families from Lennox Head, just south of Byron Bay. Uh, he went on, he's a, he was a principal at the Green School in Bali, King School in Tudor House down in the Southern Highlands. And for the last so many years, like he's, he's, had always, he's always had this vision of, of opening up something himself he calls it a progressive school. So what I mean by that, it's it's not so much around the maths, English and science. Yes, they do that. Yes, they follow the curriculum. But it's all about, right, how do we get the best out of your child? 
How do we actually find what works for them? How do we teach them life skills like communication, like leadership, like goal setting, like conflict resolution, like stress management? How do we actually utilize the life skills so they can take it into into life uh, and not take that pressure of ensuring that they get good marks? So ensuring that they actually learn the life skills that they need out, out there. Problem solving, critical thinking. So he had this vision and he, and he created it. Uh, this is their third year, as I said, um, where he started off with, with the, the primary school and now he's, he's moved into to the senior school as well over two campuses. Um, and they've also got the farm as well, as I, as I mentioned, where that every week they were going to the farm to learn about how to, to live off the land. Like this guy is, is amazing. So they've got a houseboat, which is one of their, one of their classrooms where they go up and down the river. Uh, Tiger, my son, his classroom last year was a was a train carriage. The old red butler suspended it um, on top of the off the ground. Um, it's just you know like he, he was trying to get a a plane to come and and a, like an old plane, not active, but a plane to be a classroom on the the farm. So just once again, just ways to actually get the kids out of the classroom to learn in the natural environment. Uh, it's, it's just incredible vision that he has for, to help the kids to, to learn to grow and, and to have that yearn for learning. It's been beautiful to see. Yeah, I love that because your classroom, it, like imagine walking into a dream. What can you create when you literally walk into a dream and just, you know, it opens up the eyes? Yeah, big time. I think that's beautiful. I think that's absolutely beautiful. So you're in Sydney at the moment and you're collecting goods and you've got a van going back up to Lennox Head, Lismore. Yep. What do you need? What do you need? So a um, good friend of mine, Braden, who's, uh, who's the, owns Bell Property up in uh, Byron Bay, Lennox Head, is also part of the rural, uh, the rural fire service. So he's, he can get to places where normal cars or four-wheel drives can't with the, with the big fire trucks. And so we are breaking this down the other day. I said, mate, what do you need? I'm going to Sydney. What do you reckon is the best thing that people need right now? And he said, sure. He goes, mate, there's so much donations, which is so beautiful. See within the community of food and, and tin food and, 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 cl and uh, clothing and all that kind of stuff. But they need instant meals. They need something that they can just add hot water in and just, just eat it. And so we came up with, great, let's just focus narrow and deep rather than broad. And so looking at things like the cup of noodle soup, right, where you can just, you don't need cutlery because there's a spoon already involved, add hot water, boom, you're in. All those freeze, those uh, the freeze-dried meals. Uh, and I personally like them better because they've got the better nutrients in them. So there are things like, you know, your lasagna and veggies and so forth. It's like, um, I use them, I remember from my desert run a couple of years ago, and you just add water, heat it, it's just like, oh, how does this? And it, and it has a, a lot more proteins, carbs, good fats in it as well with the nutrients. So things like the cup of noodle soups and freeze dried meals, that's what we're after right now. Um, so if you know, like, if you know anyone that can get a bunch of them, love to have a conversation i'd love to connect i'd love to to get them off your hands and go right let's get them up north and let's get them get them into someone's bellies as soon as possible yeah giddy up because it's i mean this is going to be an ongoing thing there'll be a lot of things going on like it's the rebuild on this is going to be massive you know like it's, so, yeah. yeah 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 so like i just want to share with you around that like there's to put it in perspective, there's 20,000 homes yeah. that people can't go back into. Mm. 20,000. And, you know, I read a read a post the other day. So, we, you know, we had a family staying with us for a night because we had to help them evacuate. Um, you know, I read a post the other night. The lady had five kids. She was staying in an evacuation centre. One of the kids um, that was had autism, so couldn't couldn't really handle the, the loud noises in the evacuation center. Another kid had ADHD, so always on the go, always had to run around and run around. She goes, please, I just need help. I just need, I need to get out of this evacuation center with my five kids. 
So this is one of hundreds of stories of people going, I've lost everything. Mostly are uninsured because insurance premiums were too high for this area because it is a flood zone, right? And so the yeah, like it's it's it is going to be a challenge, an opportunity, as you say, for many many months, many many years ahead. So this is when it's time to reconnect. This is where we're. How can we help our neighbours? How how can we look over and go, cool? What do you need right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm listening to you at the moment, you know, and it's it's it's, it's a tough time. And I think it's really important in tough times to actually step back for a second, actually ask the questions. What do you need right now? You know, right now, what's money going to do? If we don't have money right now, what's it actually going to do? Do we need to wait? Do we need to wait? Do we need to just hold? Yeah. Understand what's going on and understand who can help the most. I know with the bushfire appeals, money went out left, right and centre. It still hasn't got to the people. It hasn't got to the people that need it. So we need to ask bigger questions right now. We need to have better leadership in this. Like listening to John's story about how he's going to develop that. Maybe it's maybe it's about getting around the school, getting the school up and getting some new classrooms up and running so the kids can get, keep going again. I'm going, I'm going to check in with you every week about this. Yeah, and I think like it's we have an initial problem that needs to be solved right now which is obviously the basic human needs, right? So, you know, you need your water, you need your shelter, you need your clothing, um, you need your food, and totally understand that. But the, the outpour of all that has just been heartfelt, so overflowing. But then what? Then what? Because if you look at it, it's like, let's plan now if we've got that sort of that initial, let's plan for the next six months. Let's plan for the next 12 months because that's when it's really going to hit. It's just like, where do we house 20,000 people, uh, 20,000 homes? Like, where do we, where, where does jobs go? Where do the economy goes? Where's the school goes? Where's the local sporting associations go? You know, I was talking to a beautiful mate of mine, Stevie Jensen, Dr. J, who's in the fitness industry about this thing. He goes, Right, those people in the fitness industry are not going to have clients to train right now, particularly for the next 12 months because there's no one's going to pay for them. Right, so how can these fitness industry people actually then maybe work from home to maybe look at here some other opportunities to earn money for them so they can still help people but may not be in that region, maybe outside that region. So once again, how do we start to think and have those types of conversations down the track, not just immediately now, but in the three, six, nine, 12 months plus to really help this community. So it's a really, really interesting conversation. Mm. I want to have it, Charlie. I want to have it here consistently because this is mm. this is an opportunity to grow. You know, we haven't addressed the fears. The fears have been addressed by everybody else at the moment. And we, we, if we can find the possibilities and opportunities with a clear head, then it will be a growth opportunity. Yeah, big time. Hmm. And one of the other things just on that, and this is something that I've really noticed is within myself, is like I will get in and do it. I'll get in and rip up carpet. I'll get in and, and try, and go, <laughs> try, try and gurney with my little Bunnings gurney, right? I'll, I'll do what I'll, is asked of me and I won't question it and I won't say no. But then what you just said, the ability to step back and go, is that my genius? Like these hands aren't tradey hands, right? Full stop. Well, we had some laughs over, over the last week when you said, how's your tradey hands, right? My back, not a tradey back. So is that my genius? 
Probably not, right? Happy to do it, but probably not. And stepping back allows and has allowed me to go, cool, what is that? And then how can I support in other ways, which is which is the communication, which is the leadership, which is the network, which is, right, how can I pull together other aspects to still help and serve and still going to have a big impact? And so some people, sometimes people, I, I see it, some people will just want to get in on the shovel and the broom and help, which is so beautiful, but is that their genius? And if we, I, I strongly believe if we all work to our geniuses, whew, what kind of an impact could we then have then? Yeah. Let's find out. Yeah. Let's actually find out. Let's 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 do that. You know, like because I think I'm just gonna throw this up there quickly because I think it's the general sentiment from Thanks, everybody Karen. here tonight and around. You know, sending love and support, and we did that last week, and I and I love that. But I, I feel an innovation in. An innovation collaboration mindset is so important for these changing times, Shorty. Your strength is in your mindset. And I, I believe that too. And that's, thank you, Carolyn. And it's, but this is an opportunity to take, take on a new way of looking at community, you know, like, because everybody has value. Every single person has value. And I've, I've actually never met anybody who hasn't. And that opportunity to appreciate that, look, even, even storytelling, right? Someone who can read books. To go and read to kids and go and take the pressure off a teacher just so that they can focus on resetting the way the school is. Go and read to the kids for half an hour an exciting book and bring your character out as you read because it just it brings a little bit more community but gives somebody a bit of breathing time to work through the next steps because quite often, if you're in that doing, you're not getting that breathing time. And that breathing time is exactly what we need, which is what you've just said. So I really love that, mate. I really love it. Thank you. So listen, I, I, I want to keep this to roughly 30 minutes. I want people to watch it beyond what we're doing. Um, and we're going to touch base again next week. We've got, we've got some big events and realistically, they're insignificant compared to what's going on. But they're not. They're our genius. And it's actually what we do best to support one another. Um, and that, to me, is everything what we're doing. So I'm actually just going to throw it over to you to talk about quickly our event, because I'm sure that's going to lead into bringing support to your community. So, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So, drum roll. Um, so we've launched on Eventbrite the uh, the Miles for Smiles 4x4x48, which we are super excited. Um, from Melbourne to Byron Bay to your own local community, this is an opportunity to reconnect. It is time. It is an opportunity to, to bridge that gap. Um, and it all starts with smiles. With smiles. I like that one. I just throw that in a little bit at the end. Um, and so what we're doing at the end of April, so the 29th of April, Friday, the 29th of April, we start at eight o'clock. And what we do is we do four miles, so 6.2K, every four hours for 48 hours. And this is an opportunity to, to connect with one another. You can do one lap, you can do for the whole 48 hours, you can do whatever you'd like but an opportunity to come together as a community. You can do it in your own community, get a community together and, and do it around your own streets. But this is an opportunity to really come together, to really ignite, to bridge that gap and to start these conversations around your genius, around community, around what's going on for you right now, around your dark days. Because what we've realized with our, with our walks and what we do every single day by coming together and actually walking together, jogging together, running together, it brings you together on a whole nother level. So what we've done and the Business of Smiles Facebook group, I've just uh, thrown it up there this afternoon. 
Um, so go and check it out. It's the uh, the Miles for Smiles 4x4x48. Uh, register. Um, there's different ways you can register. Get some smiley socks, donate a pair of smiley socks. But if you want any more information or if you want to know how to do it in your own community, just let us know. Scotty. Yeah, I love I love that, Shorty. I just um, you'll be in Byron Bay around the basketball centre at this stage. Um, yep. Obviously, there's a few things pending on that. Um, we'll be at Mornington, Mornington Athletics Track. It's a brand new track in Mornington. Uh, we'll be running it from there, and we'll be asking people to come down. We will have a sock box, so we'll ask people to come down, run, walk, crawl a lap with us, buy a pair of socks, throw it in the box so that we can gift it to somebody else because that opportunity helps us for so much. Now, I love this. I don't know who this is, but I might dance for 48 hours. You know what? Love it. I challenge, I challenge you. Come <laughs> down and dance for 48 hours and be a part of it. Give us give us a smile. Give us some, you know, something to be a part of because it's a, it's a fair challenge, right? It's, it's about getting up and going again, getting up and going again, which is exactly what we need to do as a human civilization right now. Get up, go again. It's not easy. It's tough right now. I get that. But if we get up and go again, and this is about building internal resilience within yourself, we do these challenges so that we, our, our heads are sharper for ourselves. So when we come to these situations, remember that time we got that done. Remember that time we got that done. All of a sudden, we've got bigger strength and conviction that we can get the next thing done. And that's what these are about. And I, I can't wait. So look, I look forward to... Um, having people around that i look forward to having communities around that because we're all worth it yeah so and over the next couple of weeks we'll work out how we're going to support you more shorty um through this event um we'll keep communication lines open and increase support ears and smiles to your community so i don't want to finish tonight i actually want you to finish up tonight and i want you to um Leave your heart on the table. What I would really like want to, to say? I would like to acknowledge you. I would like to acknowledge you for all your support and all that love that you give to me and also the community. I'd like to acknowledge the community for reaching out and, and checking in and, and seeing how things are travelling and I just want to say thank you. I acknowledge my family for the continued community support. And I would like for you to think about this. When was the last time you put your head over the fence and checked in on your neighbour? When was the last time you went over for a cup of tea or for a coffee? When was the last time you just knocked on the door and go, hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? Is there anything I can do to help? These are the times, not in crisis, that we're going through where we're from but from where you are these are the times to strengthen those bonds to strengthen those relationships so my challenge for you this week is to knock on your neighbor's door put your head over the fence and go hey how you doing the only thing i can do to help watch what happens thanks guys have a wonderful night